miles up there, just cleaning out the joints with a little uh, with a little pick. This is just a patch up pointing job. I've just knocked up a lovely bucket of pink. Quick line mortar, that's still lovely and warm that, which is nice on a cold day. Wrap your hands around that. Right, so we're gonna crack on now and do a bit. Alright, you ready? Okay, this is uh, a hot mix. Quick line mortar, sticky as sticky can be. And what we've got to do is get it pushed right back into them joints. Like so. Now, the secret is, when you're doing this, is not to do it smooth. You don't want it smooth, because smooth is bad. So, once it's set in, after a while, we then give it a good whack in with a churning brush, which will push it back and it will compact it all. But you've got to make sure that you've got enough in before you do that, because if you don't, when you hit it with the churning brush, it will just disappear to the back of the joint and you end up filling the joint out again. Especially when it's things like that, where it's basically length of a trowel, there's nothing in there. Somebody's changed a brick at some stage and not bothered to put any on the top of it. Also, when you're doing repointing, even if you're just doing a bit of the old sand and cement repointing, do all your perps, all these ones, your perpendiculars, do them first and then do your, your bedding joints. Because uh, you'll find it a lot easier that way. Now, in my bucket, I have three different sizes of trowels. These are thinner joints, so I have thinner trowels, wider joints, wider trowels, and so on. Now, the reason that it's such a pink color, it's a patch job, so if you look at these, these were red ones, and they're now very, uh, very light. Of course, I don't want this to stand out like a sore thumb. So when this dries, it'll go quite pale pink, and hopefully it'll match similar to what is already in. Right, we'll cut you off there for a minute, but I'll do a bit more, because I don't want to bore you. And then come back to you when we've got a bit more done and show you the next stage. Right, so once you've got it all in, you then attack it with one of these boys, which is a turning brush. You can see what it's doing, it's knocking it back tight into them joints now. It's like that. Wrist action, you don't want to be swinging your arm, flick it with your wrist, like so. A bit like beating a drum. It's all in the wrist, as they say. Now, this isn't the completed job, because after this, what we need to do is go over it with a special stick, which I've whittled the way at in the workshop. You can patch it back like this. Now, you don't do this immediately. This was done several hours ago, this pointing. So it's had a good time to set in. And basically, if you push your thumbnail into it and it makes a mark, that's about what you want. But if you push your finger in and it makes a mark, it's still too soft. So what you do, you leave it again for a while. What we'll show you for demonstration purposes, you then get your stick and then you Give it a bit of a rub over with your stick. Like so, now any bits that go deep like that will have to put some more in. It's obviously not gone back far enough. Same again up there, because these, basically there's no mortar in these. But that just gives you the general idea of what you do. And then you get a soft brush once you've done the stick. And you just give it a I like the roller with a soft brush, like so. And you can go around with your trowel and just any little bits that you're happy with, just straighten it up, flick them off. And that's pretty much the procedure up to now. Okay.
Okay, there's your finished bit on there. And that's how it wants to look. You don't want it being smooth. Smooth would be bad. You've got to keep the surface open so the water can get in and out. And of course, same as always, make sure you put plenty of water on it. What we'll do shortly is we'll put some cherishing sheets on top of this, leave them on for a few days, keep it damp. Right, on to the next bit. Okay, we've now covered over the uh, new pointing with some Hessian sheeting, that's known as the cherishing. And what that's doing, that's keeping it nice and damp and moist in there. And we'll keep that Hessian on for a couple of days, keeping it damp and moist, so it has a nice slow set. Right, well that's us for today, that's Monday over. And we've got a bit up there to do tomorrow, a bit down there, a bit at bottom. See you tomorrow. Alright, it's now Tuesday. A little bit of a patch here to do. It's already been raked out with the, uh, the little pick and it's been wet up. Now these bricks are a Victorian 80mm clay common. It has been pointed with lime before this, but many years ago, and it's uh, it started to deteriorate. That's why we're here redoing. So we've got your males there, chipping out. How many males? Yeah. Right, so I better set to and start pointing. Right, now then, when you're pointing on brick, you need to know roughly what your material was that was used initially. Was it a fine sand? Was it a gritty sand? Where was the sand from, etc. Now, locally to us, which is the Pale Coast in Lancashire, these houses were predominantly built with the local sand, which was beach sand and quick lime. So today we're using a finish sand on this one with the quick lime. We're doing it at a ratio of uh, four to one. That be one of quick line and four of a fine sand. And when I say a fine sand, it's not that fine. It is a. It has got a bit of grit to it, but it's uh, finer than like a heavy grit sand that you'd use on other projects. Now again, if you were doing stone, if you were pointing rough cut stone, you'd be using a grit sand, and you'd possibly put a, a few flecks of maybe granite chipping or something like that in it. Some little bits of stone or something in there just to give it body and any really thick deep bits you put in what we call pins which are little bits of stone so you, you bed and place them in first to the deep bits and then the procedure as before whether it's on brick like this or it's on stone <coughs> we let it set in a bit and once it's set in we then give it a good whacking with churning brush to compact it all and like I said it doesn't matter if it's on stone that could be a decorative stone it could be a rough cut stone or it could be brick and that could be any brick it's the same procedure you've got to compact it and then once compacted give it a tickle with your stick and that's getting very annoying a bit of uh, thread there And you can see the material is lovely and sticky. You know, you, you get a big dollop on your trowel, it's, it's not, well, it's, it's, it'll come off if I do that, obviously, but it's not wanting to, to just fall off like it would with a cement mortar. Now, this stuff, it's lovely and flexible. I mixed it yesterday morning. We did a big batch in the bin. We used it hot yesterday, but obviously it's cooled down overnight. But we've not added any water to that or anything. That's, that's how it was. When we took the lid off the bin this morning, it was ready to go. And that's purely because it's quick lime. Now, if you're using an NHL, you can't do that. You can't leave it overnight and reuse it. Reason being is it starts to crystallise. So it's, it's losing its set then. And if you were to just wet it up and reuse it, the chances are it's going to fail on you at some point. Whereas a quick lime, as long as you keep the air from it, it'll last pretty much indefinitely. Now I've got some mortar that I mixed up quite a few weeks ago. I did a big batch, 
about 150 kilo, something like that of it, which is going to point the back of my house. Um, I'm just leaving that to mature. It's nice stuff to use that. But again, it's in sealed tubs. It's got a little bit of water on top. So that's, that's just not going to set. It's just going to get better and better as time goes on. It'll keep slaking for a while. If it's uh, out of the air, you know. And it'll go nice. Because obviously, if you do it at home, you don't want to be able to do it again because you'll have your, your woman on your case if it all goes pear-shaped and comes out after 12 months. So, put a good bit of mature stuff in there. Double guarantee it's not going to fail. You can see the principle of putting it in, pushing it back. You've got to have a bit of a, a steady hand and a keen eye. You don't really want to be getting it all over brakes, do you, Miles? Nope. No. Miles has learned that one. You don't get it all over the brakes. Three different sizes of trowels, which I'll show you. Three. Three thicknesses. Because all your joints aren't exactly the same. They all differ in thickness. Whether it's your bedding joint here, or it's your perps, you'll find that they're all different. And it's just the nature of the way that the bricks are laid, it's the shape of the bricks, it's wear on the bricks. Sometimes you have somebody come along with an angle grinder and lobbed a load of the brick off, repointing at uh, stages of its life. And we line pointing, it's one of those jobs, it's not like the old cement pointing where you can just fire it in and you can get seven or eight meters in a day and you know make yourself a, a few coin it's different it's slow you've got to take your time with it you know you've got to really nurture it because if you don't it's going to fail and we don't like it to fail especially when you're on something that's a bit historical because that does not go down well with historical societies or church groups you need to get it right first time. Don't forget this is going to be hit with the churning brush. Probably, probably a couple of hours. I mean, the temperature's not brilliant today. It's not freezing, but it's, uh, I think it's at the moment, it's probably only about, about five or six. So not very warm at all. There we go, see, we've got a thin joint there, so we've got the smaller trowel. Get that bit, pull it back. This brick here, that's been changed by somebody and it looks like it's uh, cement mortar bedding around it. So really putting the line around it isn't going to do it much good. Or well, it's not going to help it, put it that way. It's not going to harm it, but it's not going to help it in any way, shape or form. But it'll look a bit tidier with a bit of fresh line around it. And the scaffolding's now getting in the way a little bit. Put that new way. And yesterday when we mixed the stuff up in the bin, we used the old uh, paddle mixer. Did it in the back of the van. Because of nobody in the property. And I fired up the generator and did it that way. And then Miles spotted an outdoor socket. Sod's law. However, it will come in well for the kettle later. The old cup of tea. Isn't that right, Miles? It is. <coughs> Man of many world words is Miles. You got at least three words out of him a day. There's four now. Oh, well, there you go, we've got another one.
and your mortar of course you don't you don't want it too dry and you don't want it too soft it's got to be a bit like this you know go a lot it's got to be just right you know of course we're getting to that time of year now with the uh the old uh, seabirds and pigeons are starting to do the, the bit of breeding. So you'll be climbing up these old buildings in your own little world as you do, and you'll have some great fat pigeon shoot out of the building. It scares the living daylights out of you. It happens every year. Not good when you're balancing on a ladder or something. We had one when we were doing the stonework, which some of you may have seen us doing. A couple of weeks ago, I shifted a piece of stone out and there was a damn big pigeon behind it. it scared the life out of me. Didn't it, Miles? Yep. Yep. Of course, you keep going over if you find a deep bit, just keep going over. And if it keeps pushing through, just leave it for a little bit, 10, 15 minutes, just to get a bit of a bit of a set and put a bit more on. If it was had to. Right, it's a little bit there, and that's that section on awaiting the churning brush. I do remember that if you are a bit of a novice and you're going to have a go at the old uh, quick line mortar, three pointing, or if you're going to do a bit of brickwork with it, or you're going to do a bit of line plastering, indeed, you've got to be careful because this stuff is extremely dangerous. It's lovely to use and everything like that, but it can be, to the human body, be very hazardous. Now, if you get it in your eye, chances are, if you get a big, big doll up in your eyes, chances are you're going to spend the rest of your days with a Labrador and a white stick. When you're mixing it, it can get up to about 160C. So when you get it on your skin, you're going to get some good flesh burns. And believe me, it's, uh, it is going to do it. And then if you were to take a, a good, good lungful of the, uh, the powder, well, it's still in its raw state. What that's going to do, it's going to react in your lungs the same as it does when you put it in a bucket of water. And that's going to heat up to about 160C, if not more, in your lungs. So the probability is that you're going to spend about three hours with your local co-op undertaker. And that's how serious it is. So if you are a novice and you've never used it before, think safety. Wear a mask, put safety goggles on, etc. You know, and you could say, oh, you're a hypocrite, you're not doing that. But I've been using this for many years. And we are careful with it. When we're, we're mixing the big batches, I do put a mask on. I have been a fool in the past. I've now got a uh, knack of lung through breathing the muck in. But, uh, it's livable. So please be careful. Right, there we go. I think we'll leave that for now. And um, we'll probably go and have a warm cup of tea while that dries in. We'll catch you in a bit. Well, you know it needs repointing when it's as bad as this. Quite deep. So that's what we shall get on with next. Wet it all up ready. Miles has attacked it with the pick and got the, uh, the thing ready. And here we go. Okay, that's that bit now in. It's been knocked back with a churning brush. We're just waiting for it to set in and then we can uh, attack it with a stick. It's not too bad. The weather's quite damp today, so we're, uh, we're winning a bit with this one. It's not drying out quick or anything. It keeps uh, giving little showers. Well, we've had uh, a couple of jobs 
kind of confirmed this morning. Uh, one is a church bell tower to uh, do a load of patch pointing on, and it is a load as well. And we've got a Victorian cottage which is going to involve uh, paint stripping, uh, line pointing, and line plastering, as well as a bit of uh, stonework repair, brickwork replacement, etc. Our book is now full for this year. Don't take any more work on now. And in a another week or so we also lose miles because he's uh, decided that um, he's going to go back into the army which is where he came from and um, he fancies a army career now which is fine and um, we wish him all the luck in the world with that one so we'll probably be looking for somebody new and um, probably somebody a little bit older with a bit more experience right well we'll leave it there for uh, now while I do a bit more work that concludes this job. All done now. That's where we had the scaffolding the other day. That's all completed. I've done a bit way up there off the ladders this morning, which was a bit airy, so I didn't film it. Health and safety would be on my case if you saw me doing that one. And we did some little bits there and some bits there. And a bit up there above the windows. So that's it for this week. It's only a short one just a bit of a demonstration how to do uh, uh, quick quick lime mortar repointing so hope you enjoyed it I hope it's been informative to you if it was and you did give us a thumbs up and thank you for everybody that subscribed this week and if you haven't subscribed yet please feel free to do so and we shall see you next week